Alright, well I might be a freaking idiot. I, I might be an absolute retard. I had my stream pe preview up and it was also playing sound, so you guys were probably getting an echo there. Fucking great. Awesome. Love it. Fucking stupidity. Hold on boys and girls, let me do this real quick. I hate the fact uh, I need to get I need to get something done up so I can have a actual something up for that. I guess that's the next project I have working for Dracula. Hold on, give me a second. Actually, I need to message a couple people. Need to post stream link places.
Yeah, I should have probably gotten that done before I started. Anyways, all right. So now we're set up. Now we're ready to go. Hello, everyone. We're playing Dreadnought Improvement Mod. Or Dreadnought Improvement Project Mod. Yes, I am taking the dive for those who have been wanting to see it. And we're only going to be streaming it for right now because I'm still getting a feel for it. I really like subs and naval mines, so... That's just how it's going to be for right now. If you don't like that, I'm sorry. I can't really change how I feel about uh, two of the main things that are part of the game. Anyways, let's go build some ships. All right, so we can do up to 800 and or 8,500. Um, these things max out at 16. These are going to be our small battleships. These things are going to be absolutely pitiful. But that's fine because they're not meant to be the creme de la creme. Uh, let's go ahead and throw some funnels on these bad boys. Like so. Main guns. Let's go 10-inch guns. Good fire, uh, fire rate with good penetration. And then we'll just stick a bunch of three inch guns on these as well. <laughs> yes, just bristling with three inchers. Uh, okay, so armor protection wise, what can we get out of this bad boy? It's not going to be much, but it should be good enough for government work. All right, we can actually get we can actually get something pretty decent protection wise out of this. Huzzah! Let's give it a twelve inch belt. We're not gonna we're not gonna go super ridiculous with it. I think that is pretty solid for a starting battleship. Better than our gunboat design that we could be building. So we'll go with that. And then light cruiser, or torpedo cruiser, I should say. Let's max her out. Let's go 20 knots. Now, main gun wise, unfortunately, the United States gets the shitty uh, mounts for their guns, so we kind of have to deal with it. But I think we might be able to just work with it. So if we go like that, and then we go ahead and we throw a bunch of three inchers on it, like so. So, some four inch guns, some three inch guns. Actually, you know what? Let's go two inchers. Let's go two inch guns. Then we'll throw a couple casemate two inch guns on there as well. Hey, what's up, Nomad? Actually, you know what? Let's. Yeah, let's give let's give the room for the turrets because they're gonna they're gonna get bigger anyways once we hit Mark twos. So we're, we'll give the room for the turrets. Compound citadel, one inch main belt, half inch aft and forward. Then we'll give half inch there one inch there one inch there we'll increase the length of the two inch guns a little bit yeah i think she's i think she's i think she's good pitch is, pitch is decent roll is kind of crap her range isn't that fantastic but it's almost 10k so actually that's not too bad 
So, yeah, yeah, we'll roll with it. Uh, doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I kind of fucked up when right before I started and forgot to. Uh, I deleted uh, Dreadnought Improvement Project off of my computer on accident because I was cleaning out my downloads folder. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that fucking happened because I'm just an idiot. Put him in the corner with the dunce cap, you freaking animals. Uh, let's see if we can get second torpedo launcher on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we got a good displacement uh, percentage here. So... Of course, it's a torpedo boat, so our roll and pitch are freaking atrocious. Um, let's go 26 knots. They don't need to be f uh, too f too slow, but they also are not meant to be long range whatsoever. Spacious. We'll increase the length of the guns. And yeah, I think that will be our initial starting fleet. Uh, I also have the uh, new project that's going to be coming out. Um, if you guys would be so kind, just go check out the new prof uh, YouTube channel uh, profile pic and the new banner. Um, Dracula did great work on those. Um, so looking really freaking snazzy. So we're liking that shit. Uh, so how many battleships can we build? Seven. All right, so we will go ahead and we will position because we're going to war with the Spanish. Of course, we're we're gonna go kill the Spanish. Like we do it every time. Like it's just it's just the natural state of the world. Um, we'll go ahead and position these guys. Uh, we'll put one in New York. So we'll put the heavy heavy division in New York, and then we'll put the. Uh, light division in uh, let's put it in Norfolk all right so there's that how much cash do we have left not much unfortunately so we're only going to be able to build a few cruisers actually two cruisers at most so we'll go ahead and stick those guys in New York as well all right Uh, yes, that's that's basically like the the way to look at those cruisers is that's kind of the way to just use them is to throw them out there and if they do good they do good if they don't they don't it is what it is. All right, so with DIP, Tech Tree is completely sh uh is completely changed, so that priorities matter more more. Um, it's not like in the base game where priorities completely screw you um priorities actually have to be very strategic so we're gonna go engines boilers and armor improvements we're getting three months until armor improvements so we're gonna keep those i'm actually tempted to go gun layout first because when do we get our new battleships up and run or new dreadnoughts i should say those are going to be important so let's go ahead and do that and then let's put these guys on limited. How much money are we losing still? We're still losing a chunk. Uh, our economy is going to grow fast. So let's go ahead and let's shrink the tech budget as much as we feasibly can. Yeah, let's go, let's go to 25%. Because I want to get that early bonus from the... Uh, from the uh, Merchant Marine. Uh, it's okay, all, we all make mistakes. I accidentally lost my discharge paperwork from when I got medical discharged when I applied for a job, but I found it. <laughs> yeah, no, losing losing your uh, DD214 uh, is not a good idea, bud. That is not a good idea. Do not lose that. <laughs> <laughs> do not lose that all right so we're gonna we're gonna keep creeping this up so we'll go up to 40 percent uh 
Costa Rica is being invaded by land, actually. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. That means we don't actually have to move the fleet out at all. So that's actually huge for us. Awesome. U.S. Army doing God's fucking work. That's the last time I'll say that. <laughs> last fucking time I'll say that. All right. And let's just let's just keep creeping this up. So I'll put it up to 50%. 45%. We just want to keep creeping it. Oh, yeah, we're going to take that. Uh, USS Lucy. Interesting. I will have to look her up. See if she was a ship of note. just gonna we're just gonna let the economy grow and build and as we take costa rica that will boost us quite a bit yes actually um just letting you guys know i will be getting a video of the uss cod this summer that will be happening Um, I just, I need to organize getting a camera. If nothing else, I will possibly just do, uh, possibly just do my phone. I haven't decided yet. I'll figure it out when the time comes, but the USS COD will be coming. And then I also plan on going over to Chicago, uh, later this year to get, I believe it's the U501, 502 or something like that. Okay, uh, free money, free money. Give me, give me the money! Uh, okay, uh, nothing that I'm going to do. I'm not sacrificing any of my GDP for that. So actually, we're just gonna max out the tech budget. Screw it. We're gonna max out the tech budget. We'll, we'll catch up here by the end of the year. And we're 41% through taking Costa Rica. Costa Rica will give us, it's only 208 million, but that will give us at least a decent, uh, decent boost to our economy. Uh, Nomad Mitchell, what uh, what branches and what MOSs? And smart move on uh, on your part, Mitchell, with the uh, with filing it with the county clerk. I, I, I technically work alongside the clerks right now, so I've, I've learned a lot about their job and realized that, oh, okay, maybe you guys are a little more important than I thought. Uh, 19 kilo. Uh, I don't remember what that is. Is that... I want to say that's motor. I'm not. Uh, is that motor T? I don't remember. Sorry, army army MOSs. I I don't remember. Only thing I remember is elevens, uh, uh, <laughs> and that's because that's what I would have been if I had gone into the army. And yeah, Nomad, uh, it was the, uh, ah, tankers, tankers. Okay, okay. Uh, God loves tankers until you, until you take an HE round to, uh, to the, uh, to the front and it knocks out your optics. 
then at that point in time, it's like, uh, reverse gear as fast as fucking possible. Uh, we'll do this. Uh, we'll just, we'll sacrifice, uh, we'll sacrifice for that. And then we'll go like so, go like so, and go like so. GDP is over 10% now. Oh shit, Mitchell, you, okay, so, so Mitchell has a death wish of some kind. Fucking Christ. <laughs> being a fucking, <laughs> being, being the guy working on the nuclear, like that's, I, I, I salute you, sir. I salute you. All right, let's keep this working up, but we're going to reverse the situation a little bit. And there goes our dockyard expansion. Yeah, my uh, my brain told me, hey, bad idea going into the Marine Corps. I would have. Uh, I was originally going in 0351 assaultman. Um, then they got rid of the MOS. They tried to get me to go terp, and then I uh, experienced. Uh, 9-11, 2013, and lost all faith in the command. <laughs> so, yeah. what I would have done great in the military, but I just, I lost all faith. All right, so first dockyard expansion complete. Let's go ahead and get a second one going. And economy is still needing to ramp up, but we're, we're doing good in this regard. Uh, naval budget's a little low, lower than I would like, but it's fine. We can still work with it. Uh, we do need to start building boats, though. Um, yes and no, Nomad. So here's, here's the thing about the Abrams armor profile is that the armor profile is probably one of the best when it comes to a general purpose tank. So the, the Abrams, the Abrams has one key advantage for it is that it's, it's meant to just get into the fight and stay in the fight. It's a lot like the T-Series tanks in that regard. The problem is, is that even with how good the armor is on the Abrams, it's still very vulnerable to logistical drain. And so in a protracted fight, the Abrams will suffer a lot. And it, its contemporaries beat it out of the water completely. Um, however, if, if the battalion is able to get into the engagement and then immediately in the engagement then the abrams will win most engagements all day but you also have to be very very considerate of like i would say the russians have the best armor piercing in the world right now so like if you were going up against russian tanks and like proper russian tanks not like Iraqi or Ukrainian or Belarusian or whatever. I'm talking proper Russian tanks commanded by Russian crews. Then at that point in time, you would have a concern um, because that that their their armor piercing discarding sabo is fucking ridiculous. All right, so we got seven inch uh, casement out of the way. We, we what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the uh, four times center line as quickly as possible um, to be able to fully build out our initial dreadnoughts. Actually, um, one, of, one of the main considerations to make in regards to 
the Abrams is actually to do with its purely with its logistical fo footprint. Oh, RAP. Uh, so the armor, the uh, armor piercing discarding sabo that the U.S. uses because it's depleted uranium. That's the thing is that uh, we 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 have the DP rounds. The problem is is that <laughs> after after all the shit that happened in Afghanistan or not Afghanistan in Iraq. Uh, depleted uranium is really a hot topic now. There's a reason why the Russians got rid of it. Like, honestly, honestly speaking, I actually think that the next big, like, disarmament treaty that's signed is going to be around depleted uranium. I think there's going to be a very significant section about it. We're just going to roll two years and just build up. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, God. So this is actually, okay, so, uh, you, you know the, the, the sensor package that's on the Abrams, right? Well, I was doing some research on that, and I found out that the sensor package itself is is probably actually, like, one of the cheaper ones out there. Uh, but uh, the French and the uh, British have some of the most expensive sensor packs on uh, on their tanks, on, on the Leclerc and the uh, Challenger 2. And I found out that for us, it's like to get a replacement sensor pack on an Abrams, it's like $5 million. For these fuckers, it's like 10 15 And it's because these guys... <laughs> decided to design their tanks like shit and have those sensor packs like completely and utterly integrated into their tanks and all of a sudden it's like oh hey i shoot that and you're blind whereas with the u.s with the abrams we were smart and said hey we're not gonna fully integrate that into the hull because it's gonna take hits it's going to get shot and we're gonna make it easier to fucking replace The Leclerc is probably, like, the worst fucking design tank in the fucking world, too. It's fucking hilarious. Like, after actually reading up on the design process and, like, some of the philosophy of it, I was just like, holy shit. Like, French, French do not know how to build a tank at all. Yeah, we can't go up that high yet, unfortunately. Now, Nomad, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the uh, I believe it's the well, actually, I don't know when you got out, so I don't know if you had set V3s yet. But if I remember correctly, the set V3 is like to to re to re uh, reconfigure a baseline Abrams into a set V3. It's like the same cost as a new tank. <laughs> like, it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, you almost had it. It's an E instead of an uh, A. But yeah, you, you you almost had it. Yeah, no, the, the, the Leclerc is, is fucking dog shit. 
it's really funny because it's meant to it's meant to emulate the leopard. So the 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 doctrine with the leopard and the Leclerc is, you know, maneuver maneuver and dogfight the enemy, um, as as uh, quickly and as as rapidly as possible in order to cause so ca- uh, chaos and confusion within enemy ranks. The problem is the tanks suck so badly that they really can't freaking do it. And it's just like, uh, yeah, no. Oh, another 1% to our GDP. Very nice. What's our GDP at now? Uh, we're 10.2. Okay. Looking, looking pretty solid. We still need to finish this off though. All right, let's let that run like so. It's kind of my goal is to get the the merchant marine settled settled before we get any deeper. What's our research at right now? So we're almost a triple expansion. We're about to get eight inch casemates. That's good. Oh crap! I wasn't paying attention. Ha! Ah, okay. Well, whatever. Fuck it. Fuck it. The U.S. government printed money. <laughs> Mitchell, that sounds like the most Ukrainian fucking thing I've ever heard. Holy shit, that's hilarious. And honestly, I think I know, I think I know what APC you're talking about, funny enough. Um, and... Oh yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about that Nomad. The Leclerc does have those fucking armor modules. Oh, that's I've complete I completely spaced on that. God. I fucking hate the Leclerc. I just fucking despise it as a vehicle. Okay, well, since we got that extra fucking money from the government, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to build a bunch of ships. Uh, let's put Eight total cruisers in New York. And then we'll build. Uh, we have three. Uh, we'll just build another. We'll build nine in Norfolk. So this will give each of our standing fleets 12 ships each. And then we should probably actually build some cruisers for the West Coast. So we'll build build six to go into San Francisco. Then we'll build two to go to Alaska, to Anchorage. Build two to go to uh, one side of Panama and then two to the other side of Panama. So that will that will give us baseline cruiser escort coverage across the entire region. Boom. <laughs> yeah, they get paid a lot of fucking money. They get paid way too much money, unfortunately. All right, so in the case of our torpedo boats, we're just going to build 100 of them. We're actually not going to build more than 100 um, for the simple fact that I don't plan on keeping these and I don't plan on building any bigger ones. Oh, we're spending a lot of money. But that's fine because we're about to finish out transport capacity, so we'll be able to save some cash. And here's here's the really fucked up part about uh, the U.S. military is that 
So, or, or let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. Here's the fucked up part about the DOD specifically. So you have the DOD and the Navy is covering the entire fucking world. Okay. Now, when it comes to the trade protection side of things, destroyers are king, period of destroy. They're faster, more maneuverable. They, they're armed with sig- sufficient firepower in order to deal with any pirate threat. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got like a, uh, like 1200 in taxes or in my tax return. Um, but the point is, is that they have all this surface area that they're, that they're primarily covering. Yeah, of course there's other, other nations. (laughs) What's a few trillion dollars we lost amongst friends. But then at the same time, at the same time. They have this wonderful, wonderful thing called the Coast Guard. Now, mind you, the Coast Guard doesn't have anything bigger than a cutter. The largest weapon that a cutter has is a 25 millimeter chain gun. And the Navy doesn't think, hey, why don't we stop building weird, stupid fucking littoral assault ships or littoral patrol ships, whatever the fuck they call them. And how about we spend that money on building some extra fucking destroyers and give them to the fucking Coast Guard? This is the logic. Build fancy little ships to operate in this small area down here small relatively speaking to the rest of the world and completely and utterly leave the coastal United States exposed. Yeah. Yeah. The DOD, everybody, they don't need that. What are they going to need that for? I don't know. Reasons. Imagine if we had a Coast Guard aircraft carrier. Bro, okay, so that's the funny part. Something like an amphibious assault ship would be perfect for the Coast Guard. Like, seriously, a single fighter wing, a single fucking fighter wing that can double as a big, proper search and rescue uh, vessel. It would be fucking delicious. Imagine, imagine you're some fucking crabber up in Alaska going out into the Bering Sea and you have a fucking... You, you got a fucking goddamn amphibious assault ship running constant fucking patrols around the, the crabbing grounds. And you've got fucking helicopters right there on standby. It'd be fucking mint. Now imagine if the fucking Coast Guard had a had a few destroyers. Like the Coast Guard is... is I fucking hate how the Coast Guard does not have bigger ships. Like I really do fucking hate it. But I'm also the guy who says, you know, if I get if I get elected as president, I'm going to get assassinated because the DOD is going to be pissed because I slashed their budget by half. But that's just me. Uh, okay, so we're maxed out on this. Let's go ahead and cut it down. We got three more months until the. Uh, until the torpedo boats are done and then we have six months on those cruisers which should be very very nice uh okay so triple expansions got uh towards the end of this year or we see, we have towards an in uh a year on this uh boilers gun layout we're getting barbet anti-flash two i'm also using this to test out a few things yeah, I think you guys, when it takes 10 years to build a single four-class carrier, bro, okay, so here's the fucking great part about the Gerald R. Ford class. So, the Navy is hooked on carrier battle groups, period, in a story. And it pisses me off to no end. Because 
after doing some hardcore analysis on what the enemies, quote unquote, enemies of the United States have been working on, there's one common thing in all of it. Anti-ship, land-based ba- land anti-ship missile systems. Every single one of them. All of them. Not, not just a couple. All of them have been working on land-based ballistic missile anti-ship ballistic missiles and the navy thinks it's gonna win a fucking war (laughs) it's like uh guys guys don't fucking do it it's sad it really is okay actually i fucked up and didn't queue up more uh construction or more shipbuilding capacity but that's fine we'll, we'll we'll wait a year the first time to- i'm gonna say this right now first time one of those carriers gets smacked by like mass m- ballistic missile strikes and we lose one of those carriers it is going to fucking annihilate the navy like they're gonna have no idea what the fuck to do what so fucking ever commissioning holy shit <laughs> that just freed up nine and a half million it just it, honestly speaking it just makes me sick to think that you know this age-old idea that Uh, this age-old idea that, you know, air power is supreme, and it's like, yeah, well, if your boat that carries the air power gets fucked, that's a problem. That's a big fucking problem. Which is why, ladies and gentlemen, we do not get attached to our boats in this game. We do not. It is a, it is blasphemy to get attached to your boats in this game. Oh, oh, 100% Mitchell. I 100% agree. But you need something the size of an amphibious assault ship. That's why the amphibious assault ship is such a universal ship at this point in time is because its size still allows it to carry a fucking air wing and its size also protects it. I uh, want to know something. So the army for the vehicle, it uh, doesn't test for uh, Chinese vehicles in BC. It, Uh, oh, oh, vehicle ID. Okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. So they're they're talking all this shit about how we're going to go to war with China. And they don't even actually make the guys who are going to be pulling triggers study the the identification chart for Chinese vehicles. Are, are, you, are you serious? That's hilarious. Especially with how much Chinese vehicles actually are quite similar to ours. Now I will I will say this like you're you're not gonna see okay so controver- controversial take here yeah, this little island right here Taiwan also known as Formosa is not gonna get invaded by the Chinese no matter how much the politicians want to say it's going to get invaded it's not gonna get invaded there's a reason because there's a fun little thing on this island called industry that the Chinese literally just want the Taiwanese paying Chinese taxes. That's the whole thing. That's why they want the reunification is because they want these fuckers paying taxes because the Chinese economy right now has a massive hole in their balance sheet. And that hole in their balance sheet is the industry of Taiwan. So they're not going to fucking invade Taiwan because if they invade Taiwan and destroy the industry... The next thing you know, that hole in the balance sheet remains. And then the Chinese can't fix it. And when I say they can't fix it, they literally can't fix it. There's no way to actually fix that hole in their balance sheet. 
they've they've overstretched themselves so much that they just cannot fix their balance sheets. As I tell everybody, you follow the spider web long enough, you realize at the center of the spider web is financial gain. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter which thread you're going down, it's financial gain. Yes, you're 100 percent correct, Mitchell. Like, and that's and that's the big thing is like people don't realize that losses are going to occur in war, no matter what, no matter how advanced your technology is. The the Japanese did not realize how catastrophic their losses were going to be at the Battle of Midway. And they did not have the carriers available to replace them. Uh it's actually really funny because a lot of people don't know this. There was supposed to be a third Yamato class battleship. The Shinano. It got converted into an aircraft carrier because of the Battle of Midway. Uh, okay, and now our balance sheet is looking good. We're in the green. We are commissioning all of the cruisers we built in that series, so that's very good. Okay, so we're looking pretty decent. We're not looking too bad. What's our overall tonnage on the East Coast? Because we need we need to start prepping to attack the Spanish. So out of New York, we've got 50,000 tons. Out of Norfolk, we have 43,000 tons. So we don't have enough tonnage in order to actually invade yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to get another uh, light group put together, I think. Or do we design, you know what, let's let's design a new class. So we'll go with a 12,000 ton uh, battleship. go 10 inch guns on it secondary guns uh, we really can't fit any throughout there so let's go uh, let's go four inch guns and then just for shits and gigs we'll put single midships torpedoes on these what's the max speed of this hull 18 uh, Let's just make it 16 for right now. Let's let's keep it in line with our other battleships. But we'll give them the better armor. And then do, 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 white powder, range finders. Uh 8 6 6 All right, she's looking pretty snazzy. She's not she's not good, but she's not bad. Uh, okay, um, real quick, let me look at this. Uh, we test solely for Russian vehicles, for enemy vehicles, I know that. Um, so yeah, that's the hilarious part is that it, it's like, we ain't going to war with Russia anytime fucking soon. Like, congratulations prepping for a war that's never actually going to happen uh, hey binary how are you doing man uh how do crew quarters work so what what you have is is uh, i'll just show it off real quick so um you have all these different modules going on so uh if you look down here uh battle stations cr uh crew so our minimum requirements and what we have available so the minimum requirements to uh maintain control of the ship so basically uh this is uh, uh damage control and aiming and whatnot uh requires 490 and we have 612 people available so the more quarters that are on the ship the more available crew you have for each of the departments 
and if you go below that, it starts affecting, um, uh, it starts affecting the performance of the ship hardcore. So if we lose, if we go below this 490, all of a sudden our damage control and aiming and, and so on and so forth starts sucking with our main guns. You know, reload gets longer, our long range accuracy increases, secondary guns, same deal, torpedoes, same deal. So that's how crew quarters work, is the more crew quarters you have, the more people that are available on the ship, thus this number is a lot less dangerous. Um, if you have too few people, then the ship is just going to perform badly. <clears throat> Take a drink of water, Mike. Also, real quick, uh, just so you guys are aware, make sure that you stop by tomorrow. I will be making a post about that later tonight, um, but we will be streaming tomorrow as well. We're going to be playing some uh, some uh, Hell Divers with the boys. Hopefully, hopefully they're on. Um, I actually forgot to ask them if they were going to be on. Funny enough. All right, so let's run. Uh, let's get two. So we have enough money to build two of them initially. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll position these guys in. Uh, well, we'll put, we'll put them in Norfolk. Uh, we'll build four of these guys. And we'll give two, uh, two to uh, the fleet in New York and two in the fleet in Norfolk. Watched somebody play recently and they never touched it from cramps, so I was confused on how their ships were, weren't kind of dog shit. So, so if you're not taking hits, it's fine. And it saves a shit ton of weight. I prefer having it maxed out because I like long, uh, short range brawls. I like them a lot. Now, it also, and, and I will ask this, is what was their starting date? Because the starting date plays a lot into that because if you're later in the game, uh, systems become more efficient and so it does reduce the amount of required crew for certain things we're playing in 18 the 1890s start so our our tech is as inefficient as it can be so we need more crew on the ship overall most most streamers and most youtubers don't start in the 1890s the only one that i know that consistently starts in the 1890s is uh text with the black uh, Black Pants Legion. Interesting. Okay, well, then he wasn't expecting to take heads. Uh, Four-wheeled amphibious vehicle. You are referring to the... Um, I have it in my head. I have the picture in my head. Uh, the Votnik. The Votnik. That's what you're referring to, is the Votnik. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or it might be the BRDM. I, I believe the BRDM is also amphibious. But the Votnik and the BRDM. I don't think... Yeah, yeah. the Votnik has uh, PK, uh, PKM or PKTs, technically speaking. Um, it has PKTs and then the Vot, or the uh, BRDM has a 14.5. Yes, I just yanked that out of my ass thank you like that like i have a lot of fucking knowledge when it comes to this shit and it's kind of scary yeah it's the brdm too yeah because the original brdm i believe had a 7.6 too ah ah yes yes oh oh wait uh binary were you watching uh texas austria uh, Austria stuff because he always starts the campaign with uh, like a shit class of boat. Uh, he use he use, he has a shit class of literally boat. That's what he named the fucker uh, that he builds initially in in the game. That is literally just meant to get tonnage onto the sea so that he can uh, capture neutral provinces and stuff. Literally whole point of why he builds that stuff. 
is to be able to capture neutral provinces. Yeah, he uh, his his normal strategy is like the first four years of the campaign, he just focuses on his economy. It's uh, BRDM, not BDRM. BDRM sounds like something like sexual. <laughs> Yes, B. You will learn. You will learn things here. I, I like. I do like to to teach people. It's it's one of my hobbies. You're gonna learn today, boy. Oh yeah, B. <laughs> yeah, that's BDRM sounds like BDSM. <laughs> yeah, you put it together. <laughs> Yeah, we, so we know what B is part of. We know what B's into. You just added yourself, brother. <laughs> oh, Nomad, I, I, I fully sympathize. It, 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 it can, it can fuck with you a lot. Luckily, my dyslexia, I, I am also dyslexic, but my dyslexia is, is more of, I look at a page and if the font isn't just right for me, then it 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 doesn't look very good. It, it literally just looks like a fucking blob on the on the page. It's bad. All right. Oh oh. Wait, did we just get Venezuela and Argentina? Oh fuck, we did. Huh. Nice. Nice. I approve of this message. I fucking approve. That's awesome. That's actually huge. Because that basically means that going for a Monroe Do Doctrine style play is going to be very easy. Uh, combined branch doctrines. So, B, here's the problem. So this game, um, it will be another title that they do in which we get the Navy, the Army, and the Air Force in, for example, it will be a different game uh, because this game is so centered around Dreadnoughts, like, as a subject matter, that it, frankly, is just not going to be capable of accepting, like, for example, we're missing aircraft carriers. Um, we're missing... Uh, we're, we're missing proper, like, sub-warfare. We're missing... Uh, the ability to control the army and it's because we're playing from the perspective of the naval secretary so we we don't have a lot of the other stuff what i would love to see from game labs when it comes to this game would be a new title like american revolution is is turning out to be where you're playing as the gen as the leader of the continental army but you still have control over naval assets and stuff like that so I would love to see, I would love to see something like a Total War-esque game where you're the commander-in-chief and you control the army, the navy, and the air force, and you literally, like, you, you research and build tank hulls and vehicle hulls and weapons and, and just go the full breadth, just the full fucking breadth of shit. It would be fucking amazing. Uh, two BRM, two bath, ocean view, real estate list. <laughs> Mitchell, stop it. You're speaking the B too hard. <laughs> Ultimate air command. Uh, actually, that'd be a great... Oh my god, that would be a great... Uh, 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 what would you call what would ultimate marshal? Because gen generally speaking, it's uh, the the commander of the air forces is an air marshal. It would it, ultimate marshal or something like that. 
be great. Epiphany of idea. You become Secretary of Defense of the state circa 1950 and affect history through that lens. Oh! Oh, you get to play the Cold War. Oh, that would be fucking... L oh, dude. Yeah, Air Command. Yeah, Ultimate Air Command. Um, that, that does roll nicely. Uh, but because of the naming scheme of the games, like it, it would be, it would be ultimate Marshall air command or something to that, to that degree, which would be a cool one-off game to see them try to do. Like, I, I would love to see it happen. Actually, you know what, B? It's funny. I actually think there is a game like that where you play as the Secretary of Defense. I don't remember what it's called, but I'm pretty sure there's a game like that where you play basically play as the Secretary of Defense. I'd have to try to research it for you. All right, so we are now researching Barbette Anti-Flash 3. So we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, we have advanced uh, large funnels coming up uh, next as well. So we'll, we'll switch off of funnels here soon. Politics comes hearts of iron. Um, yes, yes, basically. Uh, a, heart, a hearts of iron style game would be cool. But in reality, what I would love to see is that they remove the politics from the game. So what I would love to see is like you basically play as the sec dev. Um where basically you play as the sec dev and your whole goal is to basically uh follow the commander in chief. Yes, yes, you are correct. Uh Ultimate Gorilla where you play as the head of the Gorilla Fire Group uh form of the sixties uh What? Nomad, you're going to have to fucking... You're going to have to give me some more information than that. Oh, head of Guerrilla Fighter Group. I... Okay. Uh, are, 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 are we talking... Are we talking like there's an air wing referred to as the gorillas? Or are you trying to say gorilla? Because, you know, my, my, my Latina ex might get mad at you for misspelling that. It does seem sometimes distracting the goal uh, to the goal of naval combat when it so much uh, time is spent on Diplo. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it can it can get annoying. Um, that's the nice thing about Hearts of Iron, in my opinion, is that Diplo. Well, diplomacy became much bigger, a much bigger facet of the game in recent updates. Um, but prior to that, it wasn't as big of a deal, so it wasn't, like, catastrophic. How long until these are done? Okay, so we have eight months. We're literally waiting for these two ships, and then we're going to go kill the Spanish. Like, we're literally just waiting on these two fucking boats. And it's just because we need the extra tonnage. Albania! Hello, Albania! Okay, uh, real quick. Alright, so Advanced Big Funnels is about is five months out. Gun layout. Uh, Oh, we're actually getting large uh, superimposed one first. Oh, nice. Okay, awesome. That actually that actually fucking helps. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nomad, if you look above above your comment, uh, gorilla. It's it's spelled with a U. U E. Um, actually, that'd be really fucking cool if they did. So have you guys ever played ninth company? That was a great game. Great fucking game. 
but it'd be really cool to play like a a, a Mujahideen uh, themed game where you play as the Mujahideen against the uh, Soviets. That'd be fucking meant. I guess the events are, are are the world simming, but also imagine if our naval chief just went and started talking shit to Z she. <laughs> Tech tree for guerrilla forces. We have researched research the Nokia phone. <laughs> bro, bro. One of the items, one of the items in in the game is literally like you're 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 receiving support from like foreign governments. And one of the items you receive every month is is fucking uh, is is cell phones. That'd be fucking hilarious. That'd be great probably touch a few uh a few nerves with certain people but you know it'd be funny all right we got five months until these guys as soon as these guys start commissioning uh will uh start badgering the spanish uh ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, let's get the extra money because extra money is nice. Very, very nice, yes. Uh, frack. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I, I probably shouldn't do it, but we're gonna do it. Check, check tech tree. We found a Toyota. <laughs> Actually, have you guys played uh, Total Conflict Resistance? It's a great game fantastic game we will uh if you look at my banner uh on the channel now uh the two top the top image and the bottom image of the banner are from total conflict um great fucking game and you can actually play as the rebel groups in the game it's fucking great uh fuck off austria i am not giving you that money i need that money i need to kill some spaniards USSR collapses. Tech tree rapidly advances. Um, so here's the funny. So I, I'm I'm gonna give a little history lesson here. Um, what's funny about the Soviet Union is that if you look at this map, basically this was the Soviet Union, like this this whole empire. This was the Soviet Union. But then you had this, and and technically this. So this piece right here. This is Russia. This is Russia proper. Why are there so many AKs in the tech tree? <laughs> um, but the thing to, to understand about the quote-unquote collapse of the USSR was because these parts, the Russian parts of the Soviet Union, they started refusing to pay taxes. That's it. They literally said to the rest of the Soviet Union, we're no longer paying taxes into the Soviet uh, Soviet Union. Get lost. That's why the USSR collapsed. That's why they didn't have any money is because they were refusing to pay the taxes. And, and that's why Ukrainians and Georgians hate the Russians so much is because the Georgians and Ukrainians, because they were the main, like the main political base of the uh, Soviet Union at the time, they were making a fucking killing off of being in, uh, being at the top of the political ladder. That's it. <laughs> That's all it is. It's actually really funny because the uh, U.S. during the '60s almost collapsed economically because of because of the uh, Cold War. Ah, Colombia, Colombia. Do you want to be my ally? Colombia, Colombia. I must have your women. Actually, it's really funny, no matter if you look at Total Conflict's uh, uh, tech tree. It's, it's so many AKs. So many fucking AKs. Oof. Yeah, we're going to do it. 
we're gonna we're, we're just gonna keep building fucking battleships for people <laughs> it's like oh you want a battleship cool we'll take that we'll take your money okay uh let's increase tension Italy, you want to cooperate? Let's cooperate, brother. Um. Okay. Uh. Fuck. Okay, we'll do it. It sucks, but short-term loss for long-term gain. Uh, yes. B. The Spanish are very easy to bully very uh, early on. Um. So to to kind of give you an idea of what uh, the situation the Spanish are in. Um, their so their initial their initial tech position is very behind. Uh, the Spanish lagged behind in naval development, basically up until the nineteen twenties. Um, they were behind everybody. This is why they remained neutral in World War One and why they remained neutral in World War Two because they did not have the naval power. In the uh, Spanish American War, they were so far behind that their ships were. 20 to 30 years behind what the u.s was fielding at the time like they they were so far behind it was unfucking real and like their supply situation was horrendous i forget i forget where it happened but there was one i believe it was one of the um uh, no i'm not gonna build that uh i believe it was one of the pacific islands that spain had I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it was one of the Pacific Islands. The U.S. steamed into the harbor. Mind you, the war had been going on at this point in time. And the, uh, the Spanish garrison had no idea that the war was going on. They went to the Americans and said, hey... We don't have any ammunition to uh, to salute you guys. Um, could you give us some ammunition so we could do the salute for you guys coming into port? And that's when the Spanish found out, like, oh, wait, you're here to take the port. Fuck. <laughs> like, that's how fucked the Spanish Empire was at the time. Like, it was fucked. And it's very represented in game. Like, the Spanish are probably the easiest faction to kill early on if they don't snowball. Uh, despite our army tech being so, so behind. Well, uh, B, what are you referring to? Uh, are you talking about in real life or what? Because I don't, I don't know the condition of the Spanish military whatsoever. ever. I just know that you guys have borderline, re you've had one of your provinces borderline rebelling. Uh, that was actually at Guam. Thank you. They, I knew it was what I knew it was one of the Pacific Islands. I just wasn't sure which one. Thank you, Mitchell. All right, so we're gonna start this up, um, even though it's gonna hurt us uh, in the budget a little bit, but we'll we'll survive. Uh, yeah, we we we'll be fine. We'll be able to adjust. Perfectly fine. Uh, let's make sure we're increasing tensions and getting... We need to get this war started. Uh, I saw a video talking about the disparity of infantry. Oh, are you talking about... Uh, okay, so you're talking about back in that day? So, the key difference between uh, U.S. and... and uh, uh, the U.S. and the Spanish when it came to infantry equipment is, so we had the Krag rifle. Um, <laughs> the U.S. went to destroy the coastal fort and found it was still armed with muzzle-loading cannon and decided it wasn't worth the effort. Jesus Christ. Um, but, so, the U.S. Army was armed with the Krag rifle at the time. I believe it was the 30-30 Krag which was probably one of the worst rifles that the U.S. has ever fielded. Um, and then with the uh, 
B, are you sure? Are you sure you're talking about because because we everybody by the time the Spanish American War happened, uh, everybody had smokeless weapons. Hey, Devin, how are you doing? Hey, Nomad, you have a good one as well. See you on the flip side, brother. Uh, but but the the Americans were using Krag rifles, which were subpar across the board. Um, and then the uh, Spanish were using Mausers. And at the time, the Spanish, they had a huge advantage in fire rate and accuracy over the Krag. Um, which led to a lot of problems when it came to when they had to actually fight the Spanish. Um, it was rare that we had to fight the Spanish. Um, uh, but the the when we did have to fight the Spanish in an infantry war, it was a problem for the U.S. Uh, now, the thing to understand is, is that we had more machine guns than they did. They at that point in time the the U.S. had a massive advantage in machine guns, and that was really the only advantage we had in infantry combat. Uh, but, 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 uh, oh, this doesn't matter because we can't get subs anyways. All right. Uh, yeah, the thirty thirty Crag was was significantly underpowered. Um, it was a short, it was, it, it, it was based off of the 3030. Like the 3030 is not like the creme de la creme of, of cartridges. Um, it's heritage, you know, the, the, the heritage of 3030. It's not like an amazing cartridge. It's, it's technically, I believe, if I remember correctly, 3030 is out of the 1870s. So you're definitely talking about a very underwhelming series of cartridges it wouldn't be until something like the 30 carbine which is also based off of 3030 was developed that people realized like what the cartridge was good for ah yes that mitchell you are correct i forgot i forgot that the a lot of the army still had the fucking trapdoor springfields fuck you are correct fuck because those didn't leave service until after, uh, I believe it was, I believe it was the Springfield that, yeah, it was the Springfield, 19, uh, 1903, that actually replaced everything in the arsenal. Fuck. Well, 30 out six, and here's here's the here's the cool thing about 30 out six. We're actually going to turn off boilers now, and we're going to start working on hull strengthening. I think. Here's the thing to understand about 30 out six is 30 out six was literally developed as a, um, we need a round that can reach out and fuck people in the face. Like that was literally the whole development of 30 out six is how do we reach out and fuck people, and they they developed 30 out six. We're not going to build that. So we're almost done with superimposed one, which is nice. Hopefully we get center line one or center line four, I should say. And that will really, really ramp up things. Uh, increase tension with the Spanish. I want to kill the Spanish, damn it. Spaniards must die. Now, I will say this right now, the Brits probably had the best rifle cartridge of the world at the time, 303 Brit. Probably the best cartridge of the time, um, just from an aerodynamics standpoint, but unfortunately, you know, 303 is British, so fuck British. Oh yeah, 30, the M1 Garand, you know, the whole the whole thing about Patton's quote, you know, it being the the greatest battle implement ever ever devised is one hundred percent true. Okay, I'll build this one since they're actually giving me a shit ton of money for it. It's one hundred percent true. Because the M1 Garand was a fantastical weapon. The problem was is then they tried to make it go full auto.
Uh, B, be careful. I don't think you can post any links. Um, I don't know if Nightbot will nuke you or not. So I, I just, I would be careful, sir. We're going to have to reduce the tech budget again. Um, Devin, here's the fucked up part. Well, okay, so the bar the bar was uh was a shit gun after after World War II. They needed replacing. But here's the problem with the M M14 is that it's contemporary the FAL was just that much better. But nobody wanted to you nobody in the US military wanted to use a European gun. If we had if we had gone with the FAL rather than the M14 the FAL would have blown would have blown us away. We we would still be using battle rifles today, probably. All right, so but yeah, the the BARs operating system was so out of date at that point in time it was unfucking real it was it was not a good gun unfortunately like it's a great it's great to shoot it at the range like don't get me fucking wrong but as a combat weapon i would not want to use it uh oh hey extra money cool oh hey extra money cool <laughs> okay cool <laughs> keep handing it to me i'll, I'll fucking take it i'm, I'm cool we good, we good, bro, we good. It's taking us forever to get into this war. Uh, let's go ahead and build two more of the Colorados, and we'll give those two to Norfolk. Yes, Devin, but here's the problem is we had um we had the capability oh and we're taking guatem or nicaragua ah yes the u.s army fucking doing it again holy shit i i don't know what's going on here the u.s army actually doing its fucking job god damn god damn son dip for the win i guess not really i i, I i'm still very on the fence about this mod um, but the thing with 556, and here's here's the key thing to understand about 556, is that we had a better round available, and it was 6.5 Carcano. 6.5 Carcano was the round, but because nobody wanted to admit that the Brits kind of had it right at the time, because they were they were developing a, a six five round for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, fuck what what's it called again the L eighty five. Um, they were developing a six five round for the L eighty five, and the only reason why five five six ended up getting to, uh, happening was because a U.S. general wanted to make his name heard across the world. And then we ended up with a shit show known as 556. 556 is not a good round, like, in general. It's just not. Like, I wish it was. But ballistically speaking, it, you have to use heavier rounds in order for it to be effective. There's a reason why 55 grain got phased out as quickly as it did. 55 grain was an absolute shit show, it should have never been selected. But 6.5 had 6.5 actually happened, like the like because the Italians and the Brits were working on six uh, on the 6.5 cartridge together. It was like six six point five by I think it was forty five. Uh, um. So the, the six point eight by fifty one is a good cartridge, but it's not a good infantry cartridge. Something like 6.5 by 45 would have been a better option. So, uh, okay, so, yeah, here, here's why. 
So the Soviets moved from 7.62 by 39 was because of the range limitations. Um, uh, 7.62 by 39 only has a real effective range of about 300 meters. Um, You can kill something at 500 meters, 600 meters, like 5.56, but because of the ballistics of the round, it can't accurately hit shots at that range. The Russians understood that they needed to be able to hit shots at that range. The thing with five millimeter is that you need a very, very thin projectile. And 5.45 achieves that. 5.45 is better than 5.56. It is 100%. Um, It just has better overall ballistics. If you were to shoot 5.45 out of an AR or a direct impingement AR, it would become a hit overnight because it would absolutely blow people out of the water um, with its ballistics. 5.56, because you have to use heavier heavier rounds in order to achieve effective hits on target, its ballistics tend to suffer as a result. And that's why people... This is why people refer to 5.56 and... 762 by 39 and whatnot as 300 meter rounds you can reach out with like specialty loads with 556 but you're also using like 77 and 81 grain bullets whereas with 6.5 creedmoor for example you're reaching out there pretty fucking effectively and you're basically almost instantly hitting the target 6.5 grendel same deal you're getting better ballistics for a bigger cartridge that has the energy to impart on target. It's it, ammunition development is as confusing and annoying as tank uh, cannon development. Because like, for example, a lot of people don't know this 75 millimeter guns did not become a thing for tanks until people realized you need a long barrel in order to make 75 millimeter effective as an anti-tank uh, round. Then all of a sudden people realized, oh wait, 57 millimeter is really good. 45 millimeter is really good. There's these weird thresholds that certain size rounds are just capable of doing a lot of fucking work. And sick uh and, and again, you know, the Italians had the knowledge of 6.5 Carcano. They understood that 6.5 was the cartridge. And there's a reason why they wanted to... They, they worked with the British uh, to develop the 6.5 uh, L85. But then the Americans stepped in and said, no, we're, we're doing 5.56. Also, you have to understand is that uh, uh, 222, which is the basis of 222, uh, 223 had already been developed at that point in time. So 222 was a, a varmint round. 223 was just an improvement on that in reality. 50 Beowulf has entered the chat. 50 Beowulf is fucking absolutely terrible. 50 Beowulf is probably one of the worst fucking cartridges in the world. Uh, yep, look at the early 7.5 centimeter cannons on the German Panzer IV tanks. Yes, yes, very, very, very terrible. Like, absolutely atrocious for anti-tank work. The only the only thing a 75, uh, a 75 millimeter uh, Panzer IV C, it would have been the Panzer IV C, the only thing a Panzer IV C could kill tank-wise would be like a BT-5 or a T-26. Like, even the Brits... So a lot of people don't know this, and and welcome Ruinous. I, I meant to say welcome. Uh, you just you jumped into the conversation really well. Um, the Brits actually had a miracle weapon called the Matilda. The Matilda was loved by the Russians. They hated it. They hated it with a passion. For one reason, one reason only is because of its thin tracks. It didn't do well in Russia. But what they identified was the Matilda was unfucking killable by Panzer IVs. Panzer IVs in the early war could not kill Matildas because the armor was just too fucking thick. 75, 75 millimeters of armor basically completely shielded you from a Panzer IV at the time. The only thing that could kill you was a pan, 
was a Panzer three, I believe it was the F. Yeah, I think it was the F. The uh, the long, the short barrel 50, uh, 50 millimeter Panzer three. I believe it was the F. Was the Panzer three F? I don't remember exactly, unfortunately. Too many tanks to try to keep keep track of. Dude, don't fucking at me. Uh, yeah, no, f we're not sacrificing GDP. Fuck you. All right, it is officially. It is officially time for a war with the Spanish. Please give me a war with the fucking Spanish. Please, dear God, fucking just give it to me. Give it to me, baby. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, I, I swear I'll never do that again. I'm, I'm so sorry. I just raped everybody's ears. Oh, shit. I forgot to do that. Damn it. Damn it, 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 damn it. <laughs> New standard infantry cartridges. 50 Beowulf and 50 IMI. <laughs> That'd be fucking hilarious. Just watch infantry guys try to fucking hit targets at 300 meters with fucking Beowulf. Hell, they had to use Flak 88 uh, cannons in order to crack the armor of the B1 Bis and Matildas. The Panzer 3J was the 50mm long barrel. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm not referring to the long barrel 50mm. I'm referring to the short barrel 50mm. It, the, uh, the, the, from the side, a Panzer 3, I believe it was the Panzer 3F, um, could penetrate from the side a Matilda. <laughs> but it, it wasn't, <clears throat> it wasn't capable of from the front. All right, cool. We're at war. Let's go. Let's go, you fucking filthy bastards. Uh, oh, yeah, we don't need all these torpedo boats because they're useless otherwise. And then uh, we'll leave some of the cruisers. There we go. Then New York. Okay, so we're going to have to split off some of the cruisers, like so. So we'll have three task forces. Wait. Okay. A deagle, a deagle for every, every grunt. Uh... Uh, no, the Panzer three E couldn't. Uh, Panzer three E's Matt. Uh, the 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 long or the thirty seven millimeters, they would shatter on the armor. Actually, uh. And Runus, the way I know that is because of the field, uh, the field reports resulting in, um, in the initial phases of Operation Barbarossa, uh, Panzer Panzer Three uh, E's were basically useless against, uh, um, uh, KV ones, which had basically the same armor. Or, well, let me rephrase. The same armor thickness as the Matilda. That is the hilarious part. Imagine, imagine a tank. Oh, crap. Uh. Well, that's kind of an issue, but, you know, we'll go handle it real quick. We just got handed another, another invasion real fast. Let's get naval invasion... Cuba. Um, but yeah, the the Matilda, the, the tank, the size of the Matilda, had the same thickness of armor as the KV one. Uh, yes, B, you would be correct. However, certain auto cannons were just incapable because they didn't have the proper ammunition. All right, we have a 58% chance to succeed here, so that's that's not bad. So we can take this and 
we have a decent chance to take those. So, cool. And then we'll leave those two cruisers in port. Uh, let's let's put all of our let's put all of our torpedo boats on in being. So we just want them defending basically. Another ten, yeah, yeah, dude. The Germans learned very fucking quickly that they had to use 88s for basically fucking everything they were coming up against because people learned. They saw they saw what the Panzer threes were doing and they learned. Hey, we need to put enough armor on these fuckers. Like we cannot skimp on the armor. Do you see torpedo boats? I do not. I I do not see torpedo boats. Do you see torpedo boats? Are they gonna? Uh, have they touched you in bad places? Are they going to hurt you? It's okay. You're among friends. You can talk to us. It's okay. I'm just letting you guys know that this... this, this I, unfortunately, I don't have chat recorded. Um, which I really should figure out a way to... to um, I need to figure out the, the method by which I can record chat and have it displaying on the screen. Ooh, we have a battle. Cool. Let's go, let's go fight these bastards. So we have two battleships, um, uh, four light, or four heavy cruisers, a uh, shit ton of light cruisers. Oh my God, that's so many light cruisers. Uh, but I, I really should figure out how to put the game, or put chat. Fuck, the weather is terrible, apparently. Um, but really should figure out how to put chat up on the screen because the Monday and Tuesday, uh, live streams will be re-uploaded in a parsed down fashion on su Saturdays and Sundays, um, to give you guys something to watch over the weekend if you guys miss the streams. I know you guys can go on to, oh, fuck this. Turn around, fucking leave. Oh my God. Fuck this noise. I am not fighting in this condition. Our fucking borderline ironclad battleships. <laughs> like, like these are almost as bad as the French, French uh, early designs. Yeah, you can stay over there. We're, we're leaving. I'm guessing this is one of their battleships. No, this is a fucking heavy cruiser. Oh no, it's a light cruiser. So real quick, let's let's look at what they, they've got. So looks like a four inch gun up front, four inch gun in the back. Actually, these have basically no fucking guns. Look at this. What the fuck is this? What in the fuck is this Spain? I'm still fucking confused. I am flabbergasted. This is their light cruiser. They have the audacity to fucking build that and send it against me. Oh my god. Where's the British when you need them? Yes, the BT-42 was fucking hilarious because it's actually super fucking effective, too. Like, a lot of people don't know that about the BT-42. It was actually one of the best light tanks of the war because of the fact that it could roll into towns and shit quickly, engage enemy fortifications, and then leave just as quickly as it came. It, it was fucking hilarious. No, that, Mitchell, this is their light cruiser one. This is, this is the light cruiser one. This is not the torpedo cruiser. So, the Spanish decided to go with really cheap, really underarmed ships this game. They're sending out a massive cruiser squadron to try to intercept us. We're, we're going to be able to get away, no problem. And 
now they've disappeared. So we can continue running. I just don't feel like fighting in these in these conditions. I, I fucking hate it. Actually, okay, I, I, Ronus, I actually have to take that back. I think the next most capable light tank of uh, of the war was actually the fucking uh, uh, Panzer 38T. I think the Panzer 38T was actually probably the most most effective because it just it just worked. The Czechs knew how to build tanks. Fuck off. Stop following me. Go home. You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't exist. Cheap and underarmed. Yeah. Like, if it... So, so with that design... Okay, so... So, here's, here's the thing. If you guys notice what I did with my torpedo cruisers, I have some big guns and I have some small guns. If you do that, then you're good to go. But if you only have a few guns like that on a boat, like that's pointless because you have no you you have no DPS. Volume of fire is what counts for cruisers. Cruisers need volume of fire in order to sink things. And I I do apologize guys, I wish I could fucking skip through this, but we have to fucking deal with it. Uh, uh, no, not the Finnish, the Czech, the Czech Republic, or the Czechoslovakia, as it was known at the time, that they were the ones that made the Panzer 38 too. Would that count as, a f as fucking up at, uh, Jean Oclain? Uh, Devin, I don't know what you're talking about, unfortunately, sorry, man. Hey guys, I really do appreciate you guys being here for the uh, for the stream. Just saying, gonna get a little sappy on you guys. I love you. Just just quick question for all you guys because I know, I know you fuckers watch the videos. Do do you appreciate when I I end the videos with love you and bye? <laughs> do you appreciate that? I think I think you should. Because I do love you. Just not no, no homo no homo. The, the boys get kisses at night. Not not homo shit. <laughs> Just a kiss on the forehead. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're we're gonna take this real quick, and then we'll we'll try we'll try to meet this fleet back up over here. I don't know if we'll be able to, but we'll try. Seventy three percent of the way through Nicaragua. Uh, young school was a huge naval concept developed during the 19th century to advocate the use of small, heavily armed vessels to combat larger battleships and the use of commerce raiders to cripple trade of rival nations. The idea was developed among the French naval theorists. The French government had the second largest fleet at the time, and there was a desire to con counteract the strength of the larger British Navy. Okay, so, yes. Um, so, I, I actually know... Okay, let's let's try this again. I actually know of this from the con uh, from the context of the Japanese fleet. Um, the Japanese were a huge proponent of this, uh, this school of thought for a long time. And then eventually they realized that in, in reality, what they needed was like the actual mass. Um, unfortunately had to be completely frank and, and I'm going to be 100% real with you guys for a second. Had the Japanese, um, had the Japanese had two to three more years of preparation and had allowed the the u.s to continue kind of just keeping the status quo that they had and the japanese had rolled out the yamatos and had rolled out a lot more of their destroyers because they could have they they weren't in the gutter yet you know 1942 1943 they they would have been worse off but they could have prepared if they had prepared more sufficiently, they probably would have actually been able to win the Pacific War, like across the board, because they would have had the mass at that point in time. 
Is this a, a new USA campaign? Dank, it is not. This is actually specifically for streams only. This is with the uh, Dreadnought Improvement Project enabled. So this will, be, this will be only on streams. You will also be able to watch a re-upload. We'll be doing a, um, a more streamlined version. I'll be editing it down to kind of compact it a little bit. Um, or at least attempting to. We'll see. Uh, if I have the time, that is. Um, and then I'll be re-uploading that on uh, Saturday, this Saturday, or maybe maybe I'll actually wait. I think I think I'll give it a uh, I'll give it a week between. Um, so this actually, yeah, I'll do that just to be able to give me the time because I need I need the time in order to be able to edit. So you'll get this stream as a re-upload next Saturday. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, in general, for the fans, look at the Marines. Six, they took the frame, replaced the engine with a uh, reverse engineer, like three engine, the guns with two, uh, guns with two fifty guns. Um, I actually have no fucking clue what that plane is, but that's also because I didn't really pay attention to the fens in the context of World War II. Uh, but I will have to look that up just from the perspective that it's it's a fucking plane, and I like planes. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead form you up. All right, let's go, boys. We got we got shit to sink. Our flag radius is actually really nice with this ship, though. That's good. Like our flag is our flag radius is actually really nice. Uh, yes, Dank. Eventually, this will this will appear on YouTube as a as a just a video. Uh, but on the days that we stream, uh, it will be a stream. So Mondays Mondays and Tuesdays will be dedicated to streams. Uh, tomorrow we'll be playing Hell Divers with the boys, and then Mondays are probably just going to be fully dedicated to uh, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Uh, I will let you guys know I took. Um, April 27th and April 28th off. So we will be having streams on those on Saturday and Sunday uh, the, that week. Um, that will be, uh, I'll be playing through Terminator Dark Fate Defiance on those two days. And we'll, we're going to try to play through the entire campaign in one go. Or two goes, I technically, I mean, technically speaking. All right, so uh, our cruisers are relatively short range, but that's fine. Um, we do have way to fire over the over the Spanish, so this is good. So as they come in closer and our ships are able to start engaging. collision there all right let's just keep bringing the cruisers in like so let the three three inch guns fucking just start rapid fucking firing oh my god look at the number of tracers coming off these bastards with how many three inch guns they have <laughs> it's fucking glorious Yeah, this cruiser squadron came out to try to try to, you know, run at us and realized very quickly that they were not you were not that guy. Just saying, you are not that guy. All right, we're just going to let the cruisers continue sailing in that direction.
Yes, Dank. I, I love I love Terminator so fucking much. Um, I'm actually... I won't say I'm obsessed with it, but it's borderline at this point. There we go. Start landing those main battery hits, boys. Torpedo. That's fine, though. We will live. At the Delaware, dispatch from the from the formation. Oh, nice! Very nice hit. First blood. Ah. Oh. Fuck. Ah, oh, fuck it. I don't. I don't care enough. I don't care enough. Let the Duluth rejoin the formation after the Amsterdam uh, passes through. Oof. Alright, that was that was not a hit I wanted to take, but it is what it is. Uh, the screen command has basically become an order to perform a suicide charge into the middle of the enemy fleet. Yes, it, it basically is. How many playable fat nations are there? Uh, so you have the U.S., Spain, uh, France, Italy, Germany, Britain, Russia, China, Japan. All right, so the Delaware is having fucking issues. We need to bring the formation back around. Actually, let's bring this formation back this way. But the Delaware is definitely having fucking uh, issues. Guys, continue focusing on these targets, please. Thank you. Because we need to sink these cruisers so, they can, so we can keep them away from the Delaware. Our cruisers are going to come back around to assist. Uh, more minor nations would be cool, honestly. Uh, yes, I do believe that they should enable certain minor nations to be played. Uh, like, for example, a lot of the South American nations, a lot of people don't know this, they were part of the Dreadnought race, which was why the U.S. Navy bulked up like it did. Um, uh, and who else? Ottomans would be a good one. Um... Who else, who else was big players during that time period? Well, that's actually about it. Would be the South American nations and and the Ottomans. The, those would be cool nations to be able to play as. So the Delaware is going to steam away at this point because she's she's just too hurt. Like there's no way to really recoup that. I'm I'm really I, I really do need to get used to the damage models of the uh, of the DIP. Because it is is so radically different than what I'm used to. All right, so we got another enemy cruiser squadron coming around this way. The Minnesota's lagging behind, which is a problem.
Oh, oh yeah, Austria Hungary. Sorry, my bad. I I, I spaced on them. So I will say this, like, this would have been a uh, turkey shoot prior to playing on this mod. Like, the difference is pretty extreme. Like, this would have been a fucking turkey shoot, period of the story. So our cruisers are going to come around this way. The enemy cruisers are actually, like, other than the scouting party here, these guys are maintaining formation really fucking well. So let's see what we can do. Uh, these battleships, though, let's look at them. So a couple 11-inch batteries with a bunch of 5.2s, some 4.5s, some 4.3s, some 3-inch. So it has a very mixed battery. Uh, the Delaware has managed to break contact, so now we're looking a lot healthier. No, they, they are in the base game. That, that was just me being an idiot. Don't worry. So the peninsula is sinking. She's sinking pretty rapidly. Oh, ah, yeah, God. Minnesota said, fuck you. <laughs> very nice minnesota we we like to see that okay let's bring let's start bringing them around this way so the enemy the enemy battleships are now engaging our uh cruisers by all technical standard uh these cruisers are protected cruisers they're not actually light cruisers so they are very much under gunned and under armored for facing off against battleships so uh run away <laughs> run the fuck the other way So the Delaware has has fully disengaged at this point. Like there's no there's no way for them to catch them without having to go through the rest of the battleships. Um, let's have the let's have these guys cut hard because they're they're gonna actually uh, detach the Duluth. He's he's gonna start running into the enemy fleet at this point if he uh, doesn't turn now. So so far this battle has been an absolute slog. And this is this is why and I I I knew this and this is why I haven't used this uh I haven't used this mod for a playthrough is because it's just so much so much different than the base game. Like it's just so much radically radically different with the damage model and everything. Wow, really unlucky fucking hit. Like that was that was an atrocious hit, RNG was. Uh, took out two two guns there. Looks like it took out two guns. One of our one of our main guns actually, to, uh, unfortunately, is gone as well. Fuck, that sucks. These enemy cruisers, unfortunately, are as fast as our cruisers, which is relatively annoying. But <laughs> yeah, we have more guns than you, so we're gonna we're gonna get more hits over time. All right, so we're we're just gonna lead we're just gonna lead the enemy fleet at this point. We'll just we'll just return fire with what we can and just lead the enemy fleet. Everybody concentrate fire on this one ship. Let's let's kill it. Then we need to bring the battleships this way. The Delaware can cut this way. Yeah, if we can just if we can just kill these last two cruisers, then we'll be able to engage the enemy fleet proper. Haha! <laughs> Haha! Get fucked. 
Go home, fucko. Ah, the Farolano is dead. Everybody, concentrate fire on the re uh, Reina de Castillo. Or Castilla? Yeah, Castilla. Alright, so. Conti continue leading the enemy fleet. Let's go ahead and detach the Amsterdam and uh, make this its own strike group or division. My bad. I'm a. I, I'm a, a, a space naval guy by heritage, um, so things are strike groups, not divisions. Oh my god. Just the lack of damage is just fucking horrendous. Alright, let's bring the cruisers back this way the minnesota has to divert because of this fucking cruiser getting in between us like this so hopefully the minnesota can just fucking kill it what's the armor like on these things it's not very much so th that just goes to show you the damage model changes like the the armor is not much on these and yet they are not taking any fucking damage all right so start Ohio and Arkansas can start engaging the enemy battleships. We're going to turn to get more of our guns pointed at them. We're going to bring the cruisers back around to start providing extra fire on targets. And there goes the Reina de Castilla. We'll bring the Minnesota back down. The Minnesota, she's limping. She's limping bad. These battleships are much slower than ours, so we don't have to really worry about them trying to catch us, but it's just going to be annoying. Okay, you know what? Minnesota, you're... I don't know why you're lagging so much, but we're going to pull you back. And then the Serena is coming in for a torpedo attack, which is really freaking annoying. Guys, please kill that cruiser. Quickly, please. Thank you. Ooh, very nice, very nice. We just destroyed the, we destroyed all the ammo for the 4.1s. They don't have any ammunition for the 4.1s left. And because ships turn like absolute fucking bricks in this game, I'm not even bothering trying to fucking avoid these torpedoes. Oh my god, the Arkansas might actually go down. Holy shit. Fuck. Oh my lord, that's a fucking issue. Get it under control, boys. God damn it. Alright, well, the Arkansas just died. Okay, well, that in and of itself is a fucking issue is i can't do anything about it flash fire yeah the arkansas just died god damn it holy fuck <laughs> this mod sucks holy christ christ on a cracker yeah yeah that, that fuck me Yeah, boys, we're disengaging now. I can't even tell you what the what that does to the war score of this uh, at this point.
Do, 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 do. There you go, boys. Like we're gonna have to get we're gonna have to get range finders on these sh on these ships, like just to get some accuracy bonus out of them. It doesn't help that we forgot to raise our training level either. I just thought about that. We haven't raised the training level since we got into this war, or even before it. All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna disengage. Maybe dump torpedoes at him. Bring the Atlanta and the uh, boys back to assist the Duluth. Yeah, the rest of our, our battleships are just going to have to disengage at this point. She's, oh yeah, duh, she's got compartments flooded, so her handling is absolutely garbage right now. Luckily, it looks like, yeah, the, okay, so he's good. All we have to do is get these cruisers off our tail, and then we're good. Do, do, do. Okay, looks like we're doing good in this regard. We might get a disengage here soon. Let's see. Well, this was not a good battle for us whatsoever. But I yeah, honestly. Oh my god! Are you serious? The boy is taking a f fuck you goddamn hit. God damn it. Keep on steaming, boys. You can get out of here. We need to get out of range of these fucking 11.1s. So I do want to acknowledge the the Spanish fucking formation. Like they are just maintaining formation so fucking well. It's actually annoying as hell. Like they're not the AI is definitely definitely performing better. So that's that's a good thing to see. That's a good thing to see across the board. Oh, they are coming. They are like, we will clap thy cheeks. What's his overall speed reduced to right now? He's pulling, he's just, just faster than the fucking battleships. So he's not getting away from these cruisers. And because that compartment's flooded completely, we can't recover the, the engine. God damn it.
All right. Well, boys, turn and prepare to uh, present torpedo tubes. Because at this point in time, I think that's the only way you're killing these cruisers is with your torpedoes. Fucking Christ. What's his cruising speed? 9.9? .9? Go down to 9.9. .9. Fucking get that accuracy in, boys. Nothing else we can do. So the Spanish and Americans trading blows. Actually, a battle that should not have fucking happened like it did. But it, it did. Now I got two of its engines. Keep firing, boys. Keep firing. Take her with you. Uh, no, no. I don't think we're taking her with us. Torpedoes missed. That's, that's not good. Yep. She might be a little dead. <laughs> Damn. Like, this, this damage is absolutely ridiculous. Like, these don't have better armor than me. And yet, I'm doing no bloody damage to them. Alright, well. That sucks. That was a defeat. That was a legitimate fucking defeat. That fucking blows. But... It's fine. It is fine. I'm just gonna auto resolve. Fuck you. Uh, all right. Well, that's a freaking issue. So this fleet needs to pull back now. Um, I need to dump dump them into Pensacola. This invasion's not happening. We need these guys to finish up down here. This fleet is gonna kind of be out on its lonesome, but that's fine. That's finishing up there. We have a battle, two cruisers versus two cruisers. Let's just auto resolve, basically traded. All right. Well, let's go ahead and turn that off for right now. And then we'll continue with gun layout because we need, we need four center line guns in order to be able to do our dreadnoughts. That sucks, but is what it is. And we have another battle. Same fleet, but greatly diminished. Let's go. Ah, the HMS Nelson. A very strange ship. All right. So this time around, we've we've got to we've got to take into account the fact that those fucking cruisers are annoying as shit. So. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, let's just tell these cruisers to follow the battleships, I think, just so we have supporting fire. We'll put these ones out as, uh, a vanguard to engage and then... Let's try not losing this battle again. Right. 
Unfortunately, our 10-inch guns are just sh so fucking short range, it's unreal. Like, I'm actually noticing our, our, our guns are incredibly short ranged. Oh my god what why what is with this i don't understand this whole fucking rushing thing i'm starting to feel like i should have put nine inch guns on these on these battleships starting to get that vibe Oh, luckily it was a friggin' dud. Okay, we got lucky with a couple duds. All right, well, <laughs> Jesus Christ. What is with this fucking torpedo rushing? Jesus freaking Christ. Like, I am sorry, but this is ridiculous. go keep landing those hits boys come on Reform the division and actually get into this battle rather than getting rushed by fucking light cruisers that should not be doing the kind of things that they're doing. 
Like, I totally underestimated these light cruisers. Apparently, they're just fucking... They're sailed by mad bastards who have zero fucking self-preservation skills, and they just don't care, and they're just going to fucking kill you. Like, that's just all they're going to do. God damn it. Well, those f fucking battleships are just starting to get a little too close for comfort for the light cruiser, so let's pull them away. The battleships have survived somehow, some way. They have survived. I have to bring the cruisers up to screen for them. This does not give me warm, fuzzy feelings whatsoever for the state of this playthrough it's like oh what's happening texas bpl or <laughs> bpl navy <laughs> yeah seriously like tex texas just fucking feeding information to the ai as he's as i'm playing he's like <laughs> fucking torpedo rush him Come back. Well, if we can, yeah, all we got to do is catch up to the battleships and start engaging them. Engage, engage the cruisers with our cruisers and just try to freaking not lose everything every time we get looked at. And unfortunately, we can't kick it down to the cruising speed because our cruising speed's 8.1 and these guys are just going to outrun us. So these heavy cruisers are armed with 9-inch guns. Why does it feel like these 11-inch guns are just so much higher velocity than my 10-inch guns? Like, that... Like, did they just redo the weapon profile completely? All right, let's let's turn the light cruisers this way.
Well, we got a partial pin with our HE shells there, but it didn't actually do any fucking damage. Start firing on the battleships. All right, so what have we learned today, boys? We have learned play conservatively at the beginning and kill as many other cruisers as possible. Then fucking go in for the engagement. All right, let's start firing at their battleships. Battleships have torpedoes, these have torpedoes, everything fucking has torpedoes. God damn it. That's fucking problematic in its own right. Alright, what's our cruising speed? 8.1, fucking go down to 8.1, or 8, let's go down to 8. Go down to 8, start fucking bra brawling. So, uh, we're also going to sub out some of the secondaries for fucking 5-inch guns, I think. 4 or 5-inch, just to give them a little extra range. So the secondaries can actually engage shit. <sighs> fucking Christ. Please get some freaking hits. I have never once had this many problems fighting the goddamn Spanish until I downloaded this mod. <laughs> like, holy crap. Oh my lord. What hit you? That must have been an HE splash on the deck. Okay, so we're gonna detach the flint. We're gonna maneuver the flint away. Oh my lord. You guys disengage, you're starting to take too many hits. You guys spin up to speed to start, start, start getting some distance. Other cruisers, come in. You have a job. All of you get away. Just run. Yeah, the, the significant lack of secondary batteries is definitely hurting us. Alright, been fun, lads. Gotta go. Gotta try to be like before the stream ends, but if I don't make it every night, I'm gonna go to season more. Be merciful upon, upon your butts. Have a good one, Runus.
right, deploy the smoke. Let's get the hell out of dodge. We took we took some we took some numbers off of them, so we'll take our win. Oh, just killed the officer with a random friggin' hit. <laughs> Start shooting at that cruiser, kill that cruiser. Yes, yes, more of those. Kill, kill, kill. Die, you stupid Spanish bastard. Yes. <laughs> die, die quickly. So the buffalo, we're going to start blading him away because he's going to run right into torpedoes if we don't. And I don't want to lose any more freaking cruisers. All right, well, cool. We successfully killed that cruiser. Let's see if we can successfully kill this cruiser. Bring... Buffalo out. We'll bring the Long Beach, Portsmouth, and the Canberra back around. We gotta kill these light cruisers so they can't pursue us. But we're just gonna we're just gonna keep trading shots back and forth, I guess. Like I think this is the this is the result of this battle, is we literally just sit trading shots back and forth. Well, it looks like this war is just going to be a cruiser war. All right, officer dead. I'm getting some good hits on her. the Portsmouth, detach the Canberra, you're not going to torpedo range because fuck torpedoes, alright, so we're going to do some potentially fucking disastrous and we're going to try to close the distance with the battleships. Now that most of the torpedo at danger is gone, let's try to see if we can get the battleships in close and just start killing things. Alright, and then... Alright, so we have one more light cruiser to deal with. We'll, we'll just handle him. Him, target him. We'll just handle the fucking bastard, and then let's get let's get our battleships in close. We need to be in secondary range in order to be able to actually start doing damage. Because if we can kill this fleet, it'd be fucking amazing. I also need to go to bed in the next like hour. <laughs> Oh yeah, you weren't expecting from two sides.
We're just gonna circle this guy and kill him. Come on, guys, get those hits. Trying to get damage on that. This is almost dead. Oh my lord! What was that? Come on. Alright, he's turning, so focus fire on this guy. Oh, you're recovering from your flood, have another flood. Oh my god, finally. Okay. All right, bring these guys back in. I get you guys suck at your job, but please don't suck this bad. Michigan is just taking a beating. Disengage. Disengage. Unfortunately, our crew training is so bad that we can't literally do anything. And I'm not willing to throw my cruisers into a suicide charge to try to sink these battleships. We haven't lost a single ship yet, so we might as well just take the win and go home. Wait, why are you guys using HE right now? You should be using AP. He's got 12 inches of main belt armor. He has so much belt armor. Why the fuck are you using fucking HE? I wish I had noticed that sooner. Alright, well we just need to go we're just gonna go for the disengagement because we're just not having any luck whatsoever and I'm not willing to risk any more ships. Not at this point. We're almost out of range of their guns, so that's good.
Slowly but surely getting out of disengagement. Well, they don't have any light cruisers left, so that's a bonus. No more torpedo rushing. Fucking Christ. Come on, give us the t times 10. Come on. This is fucking unbearable. The Spanish actually giving me a run for my fucking money, given the current dichotomy. Jesus Christ, I never thought I'd see the day. Ugh. All right, well, we didn't lose a single ship. We sank a bunch of theirs, and we had a good time. Not really, but it is what it is. All right, well, this was... Moderately disappointing to say the least. However, we have taken that province. So we can go ahead and move back up here with our newer battleships, which hopefully perform a lot freaking better. Anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call it here. I hope you guys enjoyed. I love you all. Please make sure to like and subscribe for more content. And 